Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in a house on Mexico's northwest coast, where a young man named Richard is having breakfast, with his son Taylor. Richard asks Taylor if he has finished his homework, while making him breakfast. Taylor does not respond and goes back to eating his food. He has become erratic since the death of his mother a few months earlier, and barely interacts with his father. The relationship between them is now not particularly close. Taylor continues to despise and blame his father for his mother's death. As a single parent, Richard makes every effort to ensure that his son receives adequate love and care. Taylor asks Richard for pocket money after breakfast, and prepares to go to school. After he leaves, Richard receives a call from the school, informing him that Taylor has beaten up classmates. The principal warns Richard to talk to his son, because this is not the first time something like this has happened. In afternoon, Taylor arrives home from school. Richard, who has just finished some housework, tries to talk to Taylor about his school difficulties. But he continues to avoid Richard, claiming that he does not want to broach the subject. Richard encourages him not to use violence to solve problems, but he ignores his advice. He justifies himself before entering his room, claiming that he had to beat up the bad boys, because they had insulted his mother and called him an orphan. Richard feels guilty, but he tells him that things can be resolved without using violence. Irritated, Taylor tells him that he should teach him self-defense. Next, Taylor starts doing martial arts movements in his room after watching a YouTube video. Richard arrives shortly after, and asks Taylor to finish his homework, because his teacher told him that he should improve his grades. Richard returns to his job as a programmer. He was a former National Intelligence Agency agent and a computer genius. He had been his organization's most reliable agent for executing difficult criminals in Mexico, before deciding to leave his job with the federal agency. While working, he is unexpectedly shot from a distance with an anesthetic gun, and knocked unconscious. When he wakes up the next night, he receives a phone call from an unknown individual. The man calls him by the nickname Nero. During the time that Richard was an active agent in major criminal arrest operations, he operated under the code name Nero. The mysterious man claims to have information about his history. In the past, people referred to him as the killing machine. This individual claims to be responsible for Taylor's abduction. He emails Nero a footage of Taylor being held hostage in a room. Richard must complete a mission to prevent his son from being killed with poison gas. Nero has no choice but to obey the mysterious man's command, and prepare to kill. He is equipped with weapons and ammunition by the mystery man, who tells him that he has a camera to record the progress of the mission in real time. In addition, a bulletproof SUV is parked outside, and has GPS directions to where he needs to go. He hastily drives to the location, despite being completely unaware of the target to be reached. While driving, he manages to talk to his son, and assures him that everything will be fine. When the connection is interrupted, Nero tells the unknown man to take care of his son, and make sure he is safe. Nero finds himself in a position where he has no choice but to put his trust in the mysterious stranger, after he assures him that he will protect his son. Later, he arrives at a hotel, where the unidentified man gives him orders, to assassinate two rival drug cartel leaders, the Rosa and Garza cartels, who are in the middle of a meeting. The action shifts to the mysterious individual named Mzamo, who is responsible for Taylor's kidnapping. Mzamo is the head of a drug trafficking organization. His goal is to eliminate competing organizations, in order to gain control of the Mexican drug cartel network. To take advantage of Nero's ability to eliminate all his opponents, without getting his hands dirty, he kidnapped the son. Nero is ordered by Mzamo to enter the hotel and execute all the cartel members. He is confronted by a large number of armed men, but manages to eliminate the cartel. He continues his search for the remaining members, going through each room, after successfully neutralizing them in the main hall. After a fierce battle in the kitchen, he successfully eliminates all the people in the facility. As soon as the operation is over, he rushes to his vehicle to get away from the crime scene, before the police arrive. His work, however, is not yet done. Mzamo gives him a new coordinate point, and orders him to perform the same task at the new location. He seems to enjoy playing the game he devised for Nero, and witnesses the entire shooting with his henchman and his wife, Alanza, watching the screen. Soon after, Mzamo's accomplice Donovan, a leader of another cartel, approaches him and asks him about the success of the plan they had devised together. In fact, it is Donovan himself who shared the information about Nero with Mzamo, it was his idea to use Nero to accomplish the task. Meanwhile, Nero arrives at the second location based on the coordinates. The objective is to assassinate another cartel group, led by Eliazar Machado. Nero is ordered to assassinate all cartel members gathered on the third level of a pub. 
he neutralizes all the members using the ammunition and weapons at his disposal. He then enters a room where Eliazar is fooling around with a woman, and assassinates him in front of Mzamo and the others. After completing the task, Nero asks Mzamo to allow him to talk to his son. He apologizes to Taylor, for putting him in such a risky situation. He then reveals to his son that he was an intelligence officer in a special forces unit. In addition, he reveals that Taylor's mother was killed because his partner betrayed him, and provided the criminals with her identity. Learning all this, Taylor apologizes for disliking and condemning his father without knowing the truth, and then the phone call ends abruptly. Meanwhile, Mzamo approaches Taylor to talk and to deliver lunch. Nero arrives at another cartel's headquarters the next morning, using the coordinates provided. Donovan, however, returns to Mzamo to warn him to be cautious, and to act promptly after Nero finishes his mission. Donovan fears that Nero will kill them after completing his task. Mzamo convinces Donovan not to worry, because he still holds Nero's son captive. Nero would never do anything to endanger his son's life. Meanwhile, Taylor attempts to free himself with a metal blade, and eventually succeeds. Mzamo and his men continue to enjoy the game that has been arranged for Nero. Mzamo also makes a toast, and tells his men to celebrate and cheer for Nero, hoping the mission goes well. Elsewhere, Griego, the boss of one of Mexico's largest drug cartels, receives news from his associates that three other criminal organizations have been slaughtered. Griego tells his troops to always be ready, because their cartel is the next target. Back to Taylor, who has slacked off, tries to open the door with a piece of wood. Nero, meanwhile, has arrived at the Griego cartel. He rushes to launch an attack. He takes out the cartel members one at a time, armed with rifles and several grenades. After killing the troops in the courtyard, however, Nero is shot by Griego, who also turns off his camera. Mzamo is disappointed that Nero is killed, but he is relieved that his three rival gangs have been exterminated. Donovan is happy that someone who could have endangered his safety has been killed. Mzamo, on the other hand, wishes to honor Nero, who has faced many opponents alone, by sending his men to attack Griego's base, and avenge Nero's murder. Unbeknownst to them, Nero is still alive, and is being interrogated by Griego and his men. Griego asks who sent him to his headquarters to storm his cartel. Nero declares that he was forced to do this, because the mysterious person had kidnapped his son. To get his son back, he must accomplish a mission, which is to kill his rivals. Nero admits that he did not know who had kidnapped his son, or who had ordered him to do this. He, however, remembers an important detail, the man was constantly talking about trust. Griego recognizes that the mastermind behind all this is Mzamo, the most powerful drug cartel gang in Mexican territory, and his longtime enemy. Nero seems to recognize Mzamo's name, and asks Griego where he resides. Even after Griego tells him where Mzamo is, he still refuses to let Nero go. Griego is about to kill him, but fortunately, Mzamo's cartel enters the scene, and makes a big mess in the yard, before Griego pulls the trigger. Nero takes advantage of this to free himself and escape. He defeats Griego's soldiers, and immediately kills the cartel boss. He takes refuge in Griego's room, stealing his laptop and car keys. Donovan is still worried, because Nero's son is still alive, and wants to kidnap the boy before it's too late. Mzamo initially resists Donovan, and refuses to give him the key to the car where Taylor is being held. Nevertheless, Mzamo hands over the key after he threatens to disrupt his business. Back to Nero, who is using the stolen laptop to track down Mzamo's base, and manages to find it in a short while. He rushes there to rescue his son. There, Donovan and his men open the garage of the car in which Taylor was imprisoned, and release the lethal gas inside for a few minutes. Donovan puts on his gas mask and unlocks the car, to ensure that Taylor is dead. He is surprised to find that Taylor is missing, and thinks that Nero has saved him. Nero arrives at the same time, and enters the house climbing over the back gate. Donovan warns Mzamo that Nero has taken Taylor, and orders his men to be ready. Mzamo informs him that the person who had hidden Taylor was himself. He suspected that if the plan failed, Donovan would execute the innocent boy. Despite being the leader of a large drug cartel organization in Mexico, Mzamo saved Taylor, because he opposes violence against youngsters. Nero intervenes in the middle of the argument, and points a gun at Donovan. Donovan is revealed to be a former intelligence agent, and Nero's former partner. He betrayed Nero by killing his wife. Nero shoots Donovan and his accomplices, because he is upset about all their betrayals. As a result, a heavy firefight ensues. Mzamo helps him eliminate Donovan's troops. After the threats are eliminated, he points a revolver at Mzamo, and orders him to free Taylor. 
Mzamo asks Alanza to free Taylor from the secret room. Nero is relieved to know that his son is safe and sound. After all of Mzamo's bad games, Nero intends to kill him in front of his wife. But he changes his mind when Mzamo states that it would not solve anything. If Nero kills him, his brother will come back to pursue Nero, and take revenge, causing the cycle of revenge to repeat again. On the other hand, if Nero lets him go, he will ensure his and his family's protection, as Mzamo is the only major drug cartel gang currently left operating in Mexico. Nero decides to let Mzamo live to protect his son, because he believes he can keep his promise. Nero rides home with Taylor on a Harley bike given by Mzamo. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.